you might have seen uh, the blog I write, and obviously this talk is about blogging. It's not like a how-to guide or anything like that. It's just I wanted to share a bit of my experience, a bit of my yeah, insights or things like that, and we can have some questions afterwards. And yeah, um, I actually started blogging uh, in '98, so that's before Joomla, right? Uh, and um, blogging back then wasn't even called blogging; it was just writing on the on the web. So, uh, and that was when uh, the Palm Pilot was around. You remember that? Many people don't. It's like it's uh, on museums now. So, but the point is, I started blogging about that, and it was a blog that uh, grew from just a small uh, site, and it had a lot of, uh, of readers. It was in Norwegian, my native language, and this is obviously way back in terms of design too. You can see uh, there were some, some posts in the archives, and there was some activity. But the point is, the, the, this was kind of, kind of the same that I'm doing now, just in another um, area. But then, I mean, the Palm Pilots went away, and it's gone. And, um, but the experience and the, and the fun is still there. So, uh, so I, when I started using Joomla, I started using uh, uh, 1.5. Uh, I never used 1.0. I'm one of the lucky people who had to deal with legacy mode. So then I found out that, okay, to learn about this, I have to start a blog, or I could start a blog and learn how to do Joomla sites. Uh, that, and, that, and this knowledge I can use for uh, building sites for, for clients. So my uh, goals were to connect with the community, worldwide community, and just jumped in, you know. I was thinking it was going to be like a sprint, like I'm up, up, and away, and everything. It turned out it's, it was more like a marathon, and uh, it takes some time, but it's, it's great fun. And um, I remember one of my first posts was, um, was uh, about some um, security stuff you could do to your site, and uh, yeah, and uh, it was commented on by Brian, and I did at the time I didn't even know who Brian was. I didn't know anything about the Joomla project; just used the stuff and who Brian was, never knew. And then he commented on my my site, <laughs> and um, I had to Google him and found out who he was. And um, I checked my facts before publishing the next post. And uh, now we're friends. So that's, uh, that's good. OK, anyway, uh, blogging has been part of Joomla for a while. It's been um, in some ways. Because it, Joomla has always had like a blog layout and, and um, features to be able to blog with the platform. Uh, but still, WordPress or Tumblr or whatever is more popular. And why? Uh, maybe some of the things that Kyle is working on is exactly why. Uh, because of the quite complex, complex structure and, and um, the way content and menu items are separated and it's no, not a logic connection, and also the front end lacking uh, some features for editing. And, and maybe also it's because Joomla is sold like this in, in um, a way from uh, web developers or implementers or people with that view on Joomla, and not sold by or promoted by people who are blogging. And that's one of the reasons why WordPress has been successful in that area is because some big bloggers have been <laughs> using it and promoting it and saying, well, this is really, really easy to use. So um, my start was, uh, was really simple. As I told you, 
uh, Joomla 1.5 back in 2009. And um, I expanded it with Superblogger from JoomlaWorks. It's kind of an easy plugin for uh, styling your um, images and styling your content in, in the categories uh, lists and also the article. So it gave a bit, uh, a bit more options and it resized the pictures and, and stuff like that automatically. So that's nice. But after a while I needed some more, more uh, functions. So I moved to Joomla 2.5 and K2 now earlier this year. And um, I put that off for quite a while because I have hundreds of posts now. And to, po to move to K2 meant quite a lot of work, manual work, and uh, especially in terms of pictures. So uh, luckily, uh, Fotis had a plugin that changes the, the old content uh, images from the content and presents it like they were in the image field in K2. So I didn't have to take all the pictures from from the content and manually put them into the image field in K2. So it was, I have eventually done that, but over time. So I didn't have to do it all at the same time. Um, and I needed some more uh, advanced uh, content templates because uh, any site or especially a blog perhaps needs um, different types of views. Like, uh, of course, the front page, which uh, shows condensed views of, of different categories. And then you have the actual blog posts. And if you're selling products, you need landing pages. And then you have all these about and contact and all of this stuff. And on, for instance, on the landing pages, I would, didn't want the right sidebar, or I didn't want um, uh, the comments field, or uh, anything like that. So with K2 um, sub-templates, that's very easy to do. I also have something like it's, which is called uh, Quick Looks, uh, presenting pr products, and uh, I use uh, fields, extra fields for that to add some more information. Actually, I started using K2 18 months ago on the blog, but just for the Quick Looks. So it's entirely possible to use K2, for instance, or another CCK for parts of your site and then have Joomla for the rest. So I did that for a while and now everything is in K2. And uh, another thing to do is to, uh, you have the flexibility to, s to uh, set up pages that show posts with um, common tags. So you don't use the categories. You use one category for the whole site, for instance, or uh, just a few, and you use tags to categorize, in a way, your, your content. And then you can present a view of all the blogging content or all the Sobi Pro articles or the SH404 articles or whatever, you know? So uh, I haven't expanded that too much yet, but that's my next move. Okay, so now this is uh, what the, the site looks like now. So it's... Uh, a Jew team uh, template. I did some adjustments to it, but not much. And uh, mostly adjusting text size and, and stuff like that. But I worked a lot on trying to get a uniform style on the site. So it's not like this site Scylla where every module looks different, you know? And uh, again, that's something that will be easier when the Bootstrap project uh, is going to be a reality. It, it would, would have been, it would have saved me hundreds of hours, actually. Not only on this project, but several. So, looking forward to that. So, quickly, just uh, a few keys to blogging success, uh, as I see them. Of course, you have to have great content. You have to have a good template. And uh, readable topography. I mean, if people can't read what you're... Uh, if you have lines like this, you know, people go like this when they read, or uh, too small text with a, a narrow line height or whatever. So if your site is a content-driven site, spend some time uh, creating good texts. Uh, some templates come with uh, very gray text, 
and small small letters. Um, that's not so good. I actually in increased the font size on the uh, on the paragraph texts, so so it's easier to read. Of course, you can always scale it in the browser and all that, but I like to keep it as uh, customized uh, customized uh, as I can from the start. And the quality images has uh, a lot to do um, with a, how a, a blog or any site is uh, perceived, and not just the quality, but uh, like in in compression or something, but the, that they are uh, concise in the, the way they are presented, the size, the, uh, the style, or things like that. And you need some social media integration. That's obvious today, especially here on. Everybody knows that here on Jam, right? Um, RSS feed. I'm using FeedBurner. You need a solid comment system to communicate with your readers. And uh, if you have a blog like mine or any site that, um, that can benefit from communicating directly, you need a comment system that, that is uh, easy to use and it's also uh, easy to moderate and it takes care of spam. So, I mean, there is a lot of spamming going on. Um, even though I use discuss.com and, and uh, some, some slip through, but not, not too many. So I think it's quite good. And you can whitelist and blacklist and all that, so it's good. Uh, some people will want, uh, like to have it in their own comment system in, the, in Joomla or in K2 or whatever. I've decided to use um, Discuss, and that's because of the way it's adopted around the world. Uh, many people use it, they already have an account, and um, yeah, I, it works for me. And uh, also the spam thing is, uh, is huge. Now, in the latest K2 version, they have increased the spam protection a lot, um, connecting it to an online spam uh, service. So. That's uh, an option too. And of course, for any site, you need a quality web host. I started out thinking this would be a blog for the few, and uh, I had it on a very slow server. At first, that was okay, but then traffic increased like this, and then people complained. And I moved to another server, hosted server in Norway, and people complained even more. And then I moved to uh, Rockin, so now it's there. And it's, uh, I'm happy with that for now, so let's see. Uh, of course, that involves some costs, so, so I have some ads, and then uh, it all evens out. And last but not least, consistency in delivering content is, uh, is crucial if you, need to, if you have a content-driven site, people want to come back and and um, read stuff uh, not once a month, but as often as possible if they like what you write. And um, yes, I have been lacking lately. It's because of the, this book being uh, written. So hopefully I will have some more time to, to uh, write blog posts, and especially after this uh, session or this uh, thing. So if you follow these things, maybe you have su success. Um, I think my success can be measured in um, being here and meeting all of you guys and getting to know people from how many are they? 38 countries or something? It's incredible. Yeah, 39? Yeah. Any higher? Okay, great. Uh, anyway, it's it's uh, incredible to be able to communicate with people across cultures, across uh, the world. So. So that's, um, but you define your own success. Maybe it's this face, I don't know. Um, getting down to, to more uh, hands-on stuff. Um, with Joomla, I think you have three basic options. And the one is to use Joomla as it is with installing extensions, most common, of course. And then Joomla with the content construction kit, like K2 or uh, or Cblood, or Flexi Content, or something like that, and additional extensions. Or you can use one component in Joomla that solves everything you need. Um, 
Of, the obvious uh, benefit of Joomla plus uh, in some install extensions is that you can keep it all free if you want. If you have a low budget or anything, you, you can keep it free for all. Um, of course, the more extensions you add, the more cumbersome it becomes to, to update. And if you move, for instance, like I did, to 2.5 from 1.5, some of the extensions didn't update at all. They were just not migrated yet, or maybe they never will. So, um, and you, you will need extensions for a lot of the functions you need for, for blogging in particular. So if you choose um, Joomla plus a CCK and additional extensions, that's also free if you choose most of the, the solutions. I think Sue is both free and paid, right? Yeah. And um, there are different, different uh, solutions, but it's probably more complex to set up for uh, most users. Um, if we're talking about most bloggers looking to use Joomla as a blogging platform, it will probably be too much. It will be too, too hard. But it's very good to use a solution like this if your site or your blog is going to be part of something bigger and you need a complex content structure and everything, the blog is just one component, then this is a good, good way because you, you keep everything in the same system, you have the same documentation, you have the same um, yeah, training, everything. And uh, some of the commercial templates, as we know, come with, with styling for this, um, this CC case. Obviously, with the bootstrap again, that will be <laughs> even easier, but that's still uh, far ahead. So, as I said, it can be quite complex to set up K2, and this is just to il illustrate how complex you can work with, with K2 and how you can like override and use sub-templates and category uh, inheritance and uh, what, whatever, you know. So, um, for me, this works. For a blogger who wants to set up a simple blog, it's overkill in my world. But uh, Sue has uh, a different approach. They have some apps, whereas one is uh, is um, a blog. And uh, of course, then you're you're set in what they have included in this in this um, app, and maybe you you will be stuck with only that uh, if they don't open for extensions or uh, plugins to their extension again. So if you need some, ex some uh, change to this app, maybe you have to make it yourself, something. Okay, uh, the last option is to have one component with everything included. EasyBlog being uh, maybe the most complete as of now. I, I haven't gone into too many of these extensions, but it will be good for newbies, I think. Um, it's a lot of options, but everything is like point and click and, and stuff like that. And there are different templates. You can choose from like 30, 40 templates for, for it. And for many users, it will be easy to, to set a blog up uh, using this component, but perhaps not uh, if you want to build a complete site. Um, I haven't used it for that. Perhaps it's, uh, it's good. Um, but the point here is, um, yeah, here you see one of the, one of the screens from uh, EasyBlog. Where you, you see you have um, very simple ways of, of um, choosing whether you, you want to publish it site-wide or to a team blog or uh, w which category, and if you want comments or anything, you can s you can control that on an article level. So that is something I haven't seen in s other components where you you um, enable like comments for a whole ca category or, or uh, yeah. So you have to decide what to do. It's not up to me, but if you wanna. Um, choose anything in Joomla. You have to consider 
different options and check out what will uh, give you the least work. So wh what I've found is that I tend to use templates that have a lot of finished styles for for most of uh, Joomla's modules and, and uh, things like that. If I need to go in and style things for every thing I, I add, it's, it takes time. So that's one consideration for, for me. Okay, just uh, some workflow um, tips or how I do things. I have a uh, Photoshop template for images. So every time I publish a blog post, I just paste in an image, rotate it a little bit, have the shadow and everything there, and it's, it's done. So that makes the, all the images look fairly the same. Maybe you want a bigger image, or you want different types of images for different types of categories. You can d make different templates. That saves me time. And uh, I use a writing program, as we were talking about earlier. So no, don't ever write in Joomla. Please, please write in a dedicated writing program. And I use this, um, uh, why? Because uh, if you write in the Joomla article uh, field, suddenly uh, the power grid goes down or uh, your uh, laptop fries or the browser crashes or uh, whatever, and it lo it's lost, you know? So I always write in some other program and copy paste and then I, I use this um, IA writer and what I do is use markdown which is a very simplified uh, way of tagging text and then I export as HTML and put into my uh, my article so I can focus totally on the text and not on formatting everything and then I put in pictures and everything. IA writer is on iPad and on Mac uh, I could. You could write on the iPad, yeah. But you write on I usually write on my MacBook. Okay. Yeah, but you could so use you it. I export from IA Writer and to HTML, yeah. and I just copy that HTML into the editor. And changes in the editor. Yeah, if I want to adjust and, and put in uh, images and yeah. different things. But I can, I can add like block quotes and uh, headings, uh, header two, header three, list items, everything. It's done here and export. Oh, it's a separate field in K2. Yeah. And additional images are put into the, to the actual text. Okay, uh, you should also consider setting up uh, automatic publishing to social media. <laughs> Uh, for now, there are separate tools for like from K to or from a feed to Facebook or from a feed to um, Twitter or from uh, K2 to Twitter, for instance. But uh, there is some extension in the works now that will have you send uh, set up automatic sending of content from different categories in Joomla, K2, whatever, and then have them automatically publish that to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all in a queue, so it does it automatically. Um, so I'm looking forward to that because now it's a bit, uh, I've, I have to do several operations, but this is automa automated by connecting networked blogs, which is an app on Facebook, to, to the blog feed. So every time I add something on the blog, the feed picks it up, and then it's published here. So, and I use, uh, this isn't, isn't mine, but I use a similar um, blog schedule. So if you plan on having a content-driven site, you need to plan when to build content, write content, and you need to plan what kind of content you need to write. And using color coding, you can easily see if you have been uh, writing a lot about tips or about if Sobe Pro, a lot of Sobe Pro. It's a lot of Sobe Pro color or a lot of SH404 color or a lot of K2 color and whatever. But I tend to use like tutorials, tips, news, uh, things like that more 
general. Uh, so I have a feel for what kind of content goes out on my uh, on my blog. And you can also uh, set up regular posts or stuff like that. It's easy to get um, sidetracked if you don't have a, a plan, which. And for K2, for instance, or any other uh, uh, CCK, create content templates. Um, it's easier to to make your content look look good if you have a specific template for for that type of content, and and uh, avoid all the distractions of having uh, tags in the posts that doesn't need it, for instance, or you see just uh, tagged in, and then it's, it's no tags or uh, yeah, your site will be much better if you do do things like this. And you should use CSS to to avoid the site scylla syndrome, as I was talking about. So uh, everything fits together nicely, and and um, yeah, you can do some some stuff to to make it look more uh, uniform. And uh, I like to. To make things uh, even, so it's not like uh, you see on the left, it's um, rugged like this, but on the right, it's it's uh, the, the images are are uh, on the line, and that's because I use a JavaScript to check for the highest header, and then it sets the height of all of those headers to the si same same height in CSS. So that makes it look more, more uh, nicer, I think. Yeah. It's uh, small things. God is in the details, or the devil, as you say. Uh, another thing, popular topic here as well, is to uh, to have a mobile site or a mobile blog. Two approaches. One is the mobile template uh, approach. Uh, where you have uh, different templates for each uh, each type of cell phone or mobile device. Um, that's good. And uh, another version is to, sorry, I missed one slide, but anyway, a responsive template is uh, is maybe a better way. I've I've seen some really nice uh, examples of that. Uh, Corey Web Med Media has a really really nice. Uh, websites. Check it out on on the Mac or or a normal browser, an iPad, an iPhone. It's it's really nice. It's really beautiful. So um, maybe yeah, there was there, there it was. <laughs> so this is uh, the focus template from Joomla Bamboo, and it adjusts to the full width screen, the iPad, and the iPhone. It's all the same, and it's responsive. That's coming, as you know, in Bootstrap. Um, I talked about organizing content. This is um, um, this is a choice you have to do, uh, have to make. Uh, either use multiple categories and subcategories. If your content is very um, complex, or you have different types of uh, d different fields of work, for instance, it, it might be be good to do that. Or you could just have one, one category and use tags. Uh, for most blogs, I think that would be uh, would be good. If I were to make the blog again, I would do that. If I would make it from scratch today, I would uh, simplify the structure uh, a lot. So SEO, I won't go into that very much, but that's been part of my main work for many years. So. So uh, I always include it, um, and of course, as you know, you need you need for any site unique, relevant, and quality content. Uh, and how you know it's relevant is by doing keyword research, which is time-consuming, but it's worth it. You know what people search for. You know what people uh, want to pay for <laughs> different words if it's uh, advertising, and. Um, yeah, you know, you know where to focus. You know where, how to to get um, visibility in the search engines by using the right words, the right terms, the right phrases. 
And the uh, URLs, right, Yannick? Yeah. yeah, we need that. That's, that's a solved problem. So like that's a solved problem, yeah, of course. Um, but you need them. And uh, you have to be aware of how you link internally and externally. Don't link anywhere or everywhere on uh, every page. Be a bit selective where you link. And uh, use nofollow if you have several links on, on the site or on the page. page pages are, are um, determined or <laughs> chosen for the search engine. Not as a site, but as uh, a per page um, basis, on a per page basis. So every page has certain links going out. And um, you need to make sure it doesn't leak too much. Um, so, and mo many uh, links should also go to your internal sites, uh, s pages, sorry. Um, so you, you cross-link your, your posts and your, uh, yeah. This is probably basic for you too, but many people actually don't do this. They know it, but they don't do it. So, and also with the title and description tags. So, you, ha you know what people search for from the keyword research, and you use that when linking. You link from the words, the, the, the main keywords, to other posts that are relevant, and you use the same words and phrases in the title and description. Very easy, but people don't do it. And I don't, I don't do it. No, it's very easy to, and, and something else, regular, Optimization is very important because you you can go back and you can look at a, a page in in your um, in analytics, for instance, and you can see okay, it's it's got some traffic, and you can check w what what uh, words are uh, giving it traffic, and you can check those words and see if there are relevant words, and you can add those words or you can emphasize some words in the text that were not emphasized before and stuff like that. So it's. Optimization is an ongoing effort. Okay, so the future, yeah. Uh, I have questions. What SEO extension do you use or do you use default? I use SH404. Yeah, always. But I mean, some people don't and uh, can cope with, um, with the internal or the default functions. I think that product solves my problems. So I need, mostly I need to create uh, good um, URLs and uh, make custom titles and custom description tags. And uh, they also have some social media um, tags that I use on some sites. So, so the question was, I didn't repeat the question. The question was what kind of SEO extension I use. So, but beware of, there are some extensions that offer to, to uh, create automatic links internally and externally and stuff like that. Be aware of, of that. Don't use it too much. Uh, and if you do use, do use it, uh, please be very careful because it can, be, it can backfire, really. Okay, so my wishes for the future of uh, Joomla for blogging is, um, as Kyle was talking about, I'm, I feel I'm going to repeat what he was saying, but if you were all there, right? Uh, improved front-end editing and image management, so that's use, user experience. And uh, responsive templates, obviously, in the core, both back-end, front-end, and... Um, Another thing could be to have sample content and uh, install wizards that are aimed at different types of sites. So if you want to build a blog, you get sample content for a blog and you get a setup which is for a blog and, um, or for a different type of site, like uh, a food blog, for instance, or a food, food site or something like that. Um, Authorship is something um, that has been talked about lately. I don't know if you know what that is, but Google has uh, started a project to connect authors to their content 
using Google profile and uh, tags on the on the site, which means it will be easier to uh, to say that okay, this content is mine. I wrote this content, and you can also get uh, results in Google based on a search on an author. So when you get a result, you say see the author image beside beside the, the content uh, or the link, the result, and um, it will it will be very good for authors to protect their their uh, rights to the content they produce. So I hope uh, Joomla will support that. And also tagging would be nice in Joomla core because of what I saw, said earlier that categories is okay, but tagging is will make you um, able to to do uh, different types of, uh, of layouts and different types of views. Um, for instance, you can have you can use both. You can use a category for one team of like football players and another category for another uh, for um, soccer or and then for bandy and then you can combine them all using tags and uh, show them in one um, based on players that play on different uh, teams or stuff like that. Okay, so um, yeah, this, we have seen this already but this is uh, one of the screenshots from the new admin and um, I think one of the most important factors for Joomla to succeed in this field and any field is to, to improve the user experience. And uh, the reason WordPress has been uh, successful is because it's easy to use. It's simple to use. It's, it's, um, and that's even, uh, and what ha what's happened is that people are now using WordPress to build full sites. And from what I've seen, Joomla does that better, but who am I to know? Um, and uh, I think it will lower the threshold of starting Joomla if, uh, if these things are improved. So I'm very happy with um, what we heard earlier. Um, so to conclude, Joomla is great for blogging in my opinion, and you will learn a lot by doing it. And uh, to, do, to become more widespread, we need improve the user experience. So go do it. And um, this is what I've been working on lately, where um, I talk about things like this, but more detailed. And um, yeah, thank you. So it wasn't maybe too much about blogging per se, but. <laughs> Okay. Any questions, or you want to share something? Sing a song. How do you think about this copyright thing? What I think about copyright. This is copyright text and uh, yeah, copyright in the end authors. Is it necessary to have the right and all these things? Well. Um, it's more about making authors visible. So um, the, the authorship things that Google are working on is more uh, so that if you search for some, um, some article, you will immediately, immediately see who wrote it in the search uh, results. And then you can click the, the author page and you get all the, the everything he has written. Yeah, it's a kind of collection, but again, it, it also protects you, your rights in a way, because it's more obvious who, who wrote the, um, the content. So if, it, if your article appears on several sites suddenly, yeah. you can say, okay, this, this is actually mine. It's tagged and it's, it's, uh, it's my, uh, my content. And you can... Yeah. And it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not really against me because it is in countries where I'm not so, so it's, I'm just thinking about it because I'm looking also for a solution for that. 
Yeah. Do you think it works? Uh, it remains to be seen if this works to protect your rights as an author. Uh, and uh, things will be copied online anyway. Yeah. And I saw um, an example of this uh, recently where a Joomla template provider, I won't name the name, but you can find out, um, ripped the content of uh, the magazine, Joomla magazine, mm -hmm. and my site, and several, yeah. and uh, just changed some words and stuff, and then published the images, which I copyrighted, and everything. So, um, and uh, you can try and contact them and everything. It doesn't, doesn't work. But if you, if you tag your content, uh, at least people know where it sor it's sourced from. Mm -hmm. People will know. And, um, yeah. You know, uh, I face out with the same problem when our content on Joma Shanbok is appearing on also some template providers. They just uh, increase the backlinks. And so, you know, it's really somehow when uh, your blog, it means that my blog it doesn't appear on the top results, but the blog is on the top results. So they use some, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, if and, and, yeah. And I'm not sure also how, how can I solve this problem? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if, if there's a site that uses your content to increase the ranks in, uh, in Google, you can send a complaint to Google. Mm. Uh, and they will eventually, if they get complaints on, from different sources, uh, they will um, do something about it. Because they're they are after having relevant and quality results. And if you look at the text, I think we have the same problem, the same sites. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you look at the text, it's, it's gibberish now because they have sent it through some script which juggles the words. So uh, the words about um, Paul Orwig, uh, it, it sounds very strange now, for instance. So send a complaint to Google. That's, uh, And yeah, so they can detect the, the date of the publishing, the original publishing. Yeah. yeah. Can, uh, yeah. yeah. And also the linking it to the authorship program or to that service means that when when you publish something, it's already registered on you in Google, and they know it's you who published it. And if something else appears with the same text chances are that it's, it's ripped off, you know. So if you then complain, then it's uh, more likely. <coughs> yes, it's more likely that Google will. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why they have introduced this, because they see this as a problem, that authors uh, need more uh, protection online. Yeah. You have a website and you can say download a book or something like this and download it from my server, but it looks like it is from their website. Ah, exactly. And this is handy for me because then I can update the PDF. And some people get the idea and it's okay. And I was thinking to do the same with content. So if I find the article, give the possibility to have a kind of widget or something like this. Because then it's it's possible for them to because it's all it's Creative Commons, so they are allowed to do this, but often they don't know it and they don't know how to embed and, and this kind of thing. Yeah. So mm, I was not just thinking. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Nothing Does else? It work with the book? Pardon? Does it work with the book? Yeah, it's Have good. You sold a few? Just a few. It's <laughs> I have only one. Oh, and it, no. No, but it, you know, and even this one is not a finished book. It's just a fake. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's just to be able to hold something. Uh, no, really, I ordered uh, some before I, I came here, and um, it didn't make it. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, how important is uh, mobile uh, support? Yeah. Uh, like what is the weight of the visits and uh, would there be uh, what, how important it is for you or it should be for the blogger yeah. uh, when considering to set up a site with you? Yeah. Uh, so, how important is um, a mobile site for a blog, uh, particularly in terms of making money? Is that right? Um, yeah. Or um, making money, by, for instance, if I want to set up a blog in June, uh, how much time or uh, money I should invest on that? Yeah. Because you are blogging on that directly, you know, the tools and everything. But at the same time, you're a blogger, you can see the results coming from visitors or uh, you can probably sure. I don't have any numbers for you now. Uh, I can give you some later. But uh, the point is, um, this is very different from country to country. Uh, in Norway, uh, almost everyone has a, a mobile or a smartphone, and an iPad, and something else. Uh, whereas other parts of the world, they don't. So it de really depends on your audience, and who, uh, where they are located, and how how um, much they are using the mobile uh, phones to browse. So that's, uh, I think you need to uh, consider your market first, uh, or your audience first. And it also depends on, the, on your audience in terms of what type of content you have. So if you're writing for a, a technology-driven industry, uh, most people will probably be using a smartphone. But if you're in a different, if you were uh, talking to elderly people, you know, maybe they don't. So it depends. Sorry. Yeah. Um, the mobile support is mostly on the template level at this point. So, for instance, uh, uh, say I'm just um, uh, making a, if there's a commenting system that you want to specially use, do you usually care if it's, uh, how, it, how it's mobile support by choosing it? Uh, to be honest, I haven't so far uh, been considering mobile as, as much as I will in the future. So I will be more, I will look more on that in the future, but no. I haven't. So, but of course, if Kyle gets his way, we uh, we will all have responsive uh, websites next year. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Any more questions, or you want to share something? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.